Hi, my name's Barnaby and I'm a guitar maker, repairer and occasional player living in Tokyo, Japan. And I'm going to be doing some work on this guitar, which is a Fusion 3 by Harley Benton. Now, I've already taken one of these guitars, the Bengal Burst version, and I've done a conversion where what I did was I put in a new bridge, I put on new tuners, I routed so the bridge could be floating, I wound new pickups, I put those in, I did a whole bunch of work on it. Um, and that's now just a fantastic guitar. It feels like it cost I don't know, five, ten times more. It's a really incredible instrument. With this guitar, I'm also going to be doing some mods. They're probably not quite as extreme. What I'll be doing is I'll be taking out this bridge, which is the Wilkinson V50, and I'll be replacing it with the Fishman version, which has piezo pickups in it. Then I'll be adding a third knob here, and I'll be adding a toggle switch so that we have the piezo controls right here. Um, the only other things I'll be doing, which are in any way extreme, I'll be routing out this cavity a little more to accommodate the extra electronics. And that will mean making a new backplate cover. Okay, so aside from that, I'll just do regular stuff. So a setup where I polish the frets, um, I might replace the string trees, I'm not sure yet. You know, but that, that sort of thing. I'll probably also do some more shielding paint in the cavities. At the moment, I think I'm going to keep these pickups, but that's also kind of up in the air. I might actually replace them. I'm still thinking about it because I do have a set of Sir pickups. Now, what I'm going to wind up with at the end of all of this is um, three guitars. I've got the original one in Bengal Burst that I converted, which is you know really amazing now. This one, which is also going to be converted and set up. And then I've got a third one, which is factory stock. And once I've got all three Harley Bentons, um, I'll kind of do a video where I compare the three. I'll talk about the modifications I did, and then I'll answer the question of which modifications are worth it? You know, is it a diminishing returns thing? Um, should you bother modding them at all? Um, should you go all in? And I'll just put that information into the video. But for now, let's get to work on this one. So as I said at the outset, these are budget guitars, but they're actually very, very good quality. Um, the Wilkins and VS50 2k i think it's called is a really good trem the only difference really between this and the more expensive goto version is that i believe the base plate of this trem doesn't have hardened steel so over time it can wear here but someone like me who doesn't use the trem all the time that's not really a problem the pickups which are roswell pickups are a little bit ice picky but they're really quite good um, i don't actually have a problem with the roswell pickups um and what else? The neck is what really sells this guitar. It is roasted maple. And if you look at the back of it here, um, you might be able to see it's, or well, you might not in this light, but it's got a really nice kind of subtle flame to it. Some of the others, I've got two others of these. One of them has, again, a subtle flame. The other one is just incredible. Um, looks like a very expensive guitar. Um, they've got locking tuners, which are good quality. Everything about it is really, you know, not that bad. The pots are full size. Um, everything is fine. So these guitars at the moment, the last time I looked, um, they were on sale on the Harley Benton, uh, on the Tommen website, I should say, and they were about £200 or something absolutely insane like that. I mean, 200 quid for a professional standard guitar is just mad. So, let's get started. The first thing I need to do is simply disassemble this. So one thing I want to mention about these guitars is that whilst they come set up pretty well, the necks have a couple of minor and easily resolved issues, or at least they have on every one of these I've seen so far. Um, the first issue is that the necks are really, really dry, so they just need a little bit of um, oil, you know, a lemon oil or something. Don't pile the stuff on and absolutely cake it in, um, or you'll wind up with a big old goopy mess. But 
you do want to put enough on that the fingerboard is hydrated. Put it on, clean it off, and you'll be good to go. Um, if you don't do that, the uh, fingerboard can be a bit kind of chippy and easy to scratch, but once you put this in, it just solves that problem. The second issue is that the frets themselves can be a little bit scratchy. Uh, they are on this one. Um, and so what you're going to need to do is probably just lightly dress the fret ends and then maybe polish the frets themselves. You can use like a metal polish or whatever you've got. Um, there are plenty of tutorials online, but as always, if you don't feel confident doing this, then you'll need to take it to a repair place where they can do this for you. And you'll need to factor in the fact that you're gonna to have to do that to the cost of the guitar. Something else I want to mention about these guitars is that the bodywood is something called Nyato. It's a, um, a sort of, I think it's an East Asian mahogany variant or something, but I'm, I'm not quite sure where it's from. I should know, but it slipped my mind. But what I will say about it is I love this type of wood when it's used on guitar bodies. It's a flat wood. Um, in other words, it finishes nice and flat. Um, so it finishes well, it will take stains, it will take paint. Um, it's not a beautiful wood in its own right, but it'll actually work as a kind of support for a guitar body. You can put a more spectacular piece of wood on the top if that's what you want to do. It machines well, it's not overly punky, it doesn't have all sorts of issues like that. So it's a really good quality wood when you're working. And it's very, very light, and it's got a quality of kind of airiness that you find in good guitar woods. You know, old growth mahogany had that, Spanish cedar has it, um, this kind of space between the fibers, um, it, and that makes quite a musical instrument, I tend to find. The denser the body wood is, the more you lose that musicality. A lot of modern mahoganies, because of lead from air pollution and things, have become really quite dense and much less responsive. Woods like this, I think, are really good. Nyato's great, uh, bass wood is great, great. Paulonia, um, or Kitty as it's called in Japan, is also fantastic. That is very, very light. The only problem with that is it dents way too easily. This wood, I think, is a good compromise. So there's lots of options for where to put things. I've decided I'm going to have the knob for the piezo control about here, just a little bit behind the bridge, and then the switch to control them will actually be halfway between the volume and the tone knob. Part of the reason I'm doing that is the previous versions of the Fusion guitar, the Fusion 2, actually had a switch here. It was then replaced by a push-pull here. But, you know, there's space for the switch to go into the cavity, and then I only need to route out a little bit extra for this. Now for a slightly scary job. Um, what I need to do is route out my cavity. You can see I've already hogged out some material with a force and a bit, but I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to route out the rest. After I've done the cavity, then I'll do the lip and then I'm going to make a cover. So if we have a look here, we can see everything kind of works out. This is our Fishman preamp and that fits perfectly. This is our switch pot. This is our regular pot and our five-way switch. There'll be a little switch that goes in here and there's even room here for a nine volt battery. And that'll be really useful because it means I won't need to make another cavity. So all I need to do now is create a lip for this plus a new cover. So now you can see these cavities are done with shielding and this cavity is all shielded. And the good thing about using shielding paint, apart from the fact that, well, it shields, is that it actually works to make everything look kind of stock. What's sort of interesting about this work is that if you look at this cavity up close, you might be able to see that here it's a bit rougher 
and that's the part from the factory and then here which is my part it's a bit cleaner so in that sense the shielding paint actually disguises the difference between slightly rough factory workmanship and cleaner workshop workmanship <laughs> So now we have a nice neat cavity, a little angle there, a little thing for a lip there and a hole going through and all I need to do is stain it black and then we're good to go. Now let me show you a little guitar maker's trick. It sometimes happens that you're making a control cavity for a new cavity or a cavity for which you don't have a template and getting a good fit can be really really hard. So what you do is you get part of it to fit and when it fits well you can take a pencil and trace the outline of the part that's not fitting onto some masking tape and when you lift that away that will tell you how much material you need to take away and where so for example when I look at this I can see I need to take a fairly big chunk out of this section here. So this is the result of that work. A cavity cover and a battery box, nice and flush and a perfect fit. So it all looks stock. The only thing is this is acrylic and this is a general plastic so they don't quite match but the only way I could solve that problem is by making this out of acrylic and honestly can't be bothered. Close enough. So now I'm going to clean up these frets. They are level so there's no problem with that but the ends aren't great and also the tops of the frets could use some work. So first I'm going to just angle them a little using this special file. And then I'm going to round off and clean up the ends and then polish the tops. Now, polishing time. I've gone through the grits and now I've just put some metal polish on each fret. These frets look pretty good and they feel very nice. Now it's time for some reassembly. I'm going to do the final uh, electronics stuff at home but I can do a basic bit here and I'm going to be first reinstalling these pickups and then um, putting the neck on and doing that sort of thing but all the soldering up I'll do when I get back home. Now these are the pickups that I modified, there's another video on how I did it. Essentially what I did was I put a hand wound coil on the slug side and I kept the original Roswell coil on the screw side. I also changed out the magnets and I repotted them. So these are going to be interesting pickups. The bridge pickups almost the same, slight mismatch in the coils and the fact that this one is hand wound um, or scatter wound it's sometimes called will mean that there'll be some sonic difference but this one the coils are quite mismatched. Um, this one's about 4.2, this one's about 6.2 so there's really going to be a really uh, an interesting sound. You might get a bit more feedback from the bridge coil but I don't really mind because that's the one I use when I'm doing kind of hard rock stuff. And there we are, pickups installed. They look a little neater with the cavities uh, fully shielded with the black paint now. And also, I really like the look of Zebra. So here we have the Fishman power bridge installed. It's basically the same as the Wilkinson bridge that was on there before, except that it's matte rather than um, chromed. And on the back, it all fits. There's no problem with the block. Um, the only difference really, apart from the matte thing, is that it is a Piezo bridge, it's a Fishman power bridge. And so this little lead here comes out and into the cavity and will connect to something called a power chip, which acts as an onboard sort of preamp. 
Now, the other thing I should say about this is I did need to enlarge the cavity very, very slightly for this so that it could move smoothly, but it now moves perfectly and I'm very happy with it. I'll put my favorite strings on it, which are Elixir OptiWebs. I use 10 to 46. So there'll be a bit of intonation setting to do um, and general setup on the bridge, but fundamentally it's looking pretty good. Well, I was unable to resist. I couldn't wait until I got home. I thought, nope, I have to do this now. And so I am just gonna solder things up and we're gonna see how we go. 2,000 years later. So finally, here we are. The only thing I need to do is find where I've put the jack plate. I needed to enlarge the cavity a tiny bit for the um, stereo uh, jack. But apart from that, installation was relatively straightforward. It was just time consuming. Now, I'm the world's biggest idiot, so I managed to lose the original jack plate somewhere in the workshop, and I don't know where. So I did what anyone would do. I just made a new one. And so I've knocked this up out of a piece of acrylic, and I'm currently in the process, or well, not with that, with this, of doing a wet and dry job on it to clean it up and make it look nice. I bent it with a heat gun, and it fits the profile perfectly. Funny thing is that I seem to remember the original jack plate wasn't actually bent to the right angle and it didn't quite fit, so maybe this one will be better. Who can say? It's definitely custom. And here we are. This is the jack plate. And well, I've got to say, it's actually kind of a nice little finishing touch. The only other thing I'm going to do is change out the string trees for these little tusk ones. But after I've done that, well, I'll take this guitar home and the next thing you see will be me testing it. So here's the guitar. Um, I'm back home. It's all done. It all works. And I am, um, well, I'm wearing glasses today for some reason. The mood is upon me. Now, today I'm going to be giving you a little bit of an idea of the tones, but I'll just be strumming a little because I did manage to cut my hand yesterday. I put some copper tape on the control cavity and ran my finger along the edge to see that it was flush, like an idiot. And of course, I cut my finger open. So I'm feeling very, very stupid. So no real playing today, but you will get an idea of some of the tones. Let's start with our magnetic pickups. Now, I generally set it up so that the switch is opposite. In other words, this is the neck, this is the bridge. I do that because I spend more time in the neck pickup because I play a lot of jazz and that sort of thing. So, let's hear our neck pickup. Now, if we split, That's quite a sweet sound. And then we move here to our next position and we get our neck pickup and our middle. And then we pull out. And our middle. These Roswell pickups, um, their middle pickup I think is really, really good, um, but maybe that's just me. Okay, now we move to bridge and middle. Pull out. And finally, just our bridge pickup. That's just the one coil. So, I'm very, very happy with the sound of the magnetic pickups. Now, let's hear our piezo. If we put this switch here all the way down, two positions down. Yeah. 
So, um, we can control the volume here. And of course, it's supposed to sound like an acoustic guitar. you whether you think that sounds acoustic or not I think the key point to it is that it depends on the amp you run it through let's see if I can do a tiny bit of you know oh, it's a little hard very fumbly fingers today but that sounds sort of acoustic ish now if we combine these two by putting the switch in the middle position we get a blend of the piezo and of the magnetics right so this is just the magnetic this is both and this is just the piezo Those are our three sounds. So when we get that blend, it fills out the sound. Um, and of course we can change the amount. By controlling the piezo. And the magnetic output. So we can get a huge range of tones. So overall, how do I feel about this guitar and the modifications? I'm very, very happy with it. It's a cool guitar. I've never actually owned a piezo guitar before, so I'm going to have a lot of fun messing around with it. Right, see you next time.